In this lecture we will discuss the brief history of IO psychology. Considering that the field of psychology itself has been around for only a relatively short time, since 1879, it is not surprising that IO psychology has a correspondingly short history. Although various experts disagree about the precise beginning of IO psychology, it is generally thought to have started either in 1903 when, Walter Dill Scott wrote The Theory of Advertising, in which psychology was first applied to business, in 1910 when Hugo Munsterberg wrote Psychology and Industrial Efficiency, which was first published in English in 1913, or in 1911 when Scott wrote the book Increasing Human Efficiency in Business. Regardless of the official starting date, IO psychology was born in the early 1900s. In addition, to Scott and Munsterberg, pioneers in the field include James Cattle, Walter Bingham, John Watson, Marion Bills, and Lillian Gilbreth. Interestingly, the term industrial psychology was seldom used prior to World War I. Instead, the common terms for the field were economic psychology, business psychology, and employment psychology next let us discuss the army alpha and army beta. I.O. psychology made its first big impact during World War I. Because of the large number of soldiers who had to be assigned to various units within the armed forces, I.O. psychologists were employed to test recruits and then place them in appropriate positions. The testing was accomplished mainly through the army alpha and army beta tests of mental ability. The alpha test was used for recruits who could read and the beta test for recruits who could not read. The more intelligent recruits were assigned to officer training, and the less intelligent to the infantry. Interestingly, John Watson, who is better known as a pioneer in behaviorism, served as a major in the U.S. Army in World War I and developed perceptual and motor tests for potential pilots. I.O. psychologists, along with engineers, such as Henry Gant, were responsible for increasing the efficiency with which cargo ships were built, repaired, and loaded. In the 1920s, though certainly not an IO psychologist, inventor Thomas A. Edison understood the importance of selecting the right employees. Edison created a 163 item knowledge test that he administered to over 900 applicants. The test and passing score were so difficult that only 5% of the applicants passed. Now let us talk about the Gilbreths. Two of the most interesting figures in the early years of I.O. psychology were the husband and wife team of Frank Gilbreth and Lillian Moller Gilbreth. The Gilbreths were among the first, if not the first, scientists to improve productivity and reduce fatigue by studying the motions used by workers. Frank began his career as a contractor and became famous for developing improvements in bricklaying that reduced the number of motions needed to lay a brick. Lillian, the much more educated of the two, received her PhD from Brown University in 1915, a rare achievement for a woman at that time. As a couple, they had 12 children, and the efficiency methods they used to raise their children while having busy careers were the inspiration for the book and the movie Cheaper by the Dozen. After Frank's death in 1924 at the age of 55, Lillian continued her consulting with industry, as the Great Depression forced companies to find ways to reduce costs and be more productive. In 1935, she became a professor of management and engineering at Purdue University, the first woman to hold such a position. During these early years, IO psychology thrived outside of the United States. Prominent psychologists who applied psychology to problems in industry outside the United States included Jules Suter in Switzerland, Bernard Muschio in Australia, Franziska Baumgart and Tremor, Walter Mode, William Stern, Otto Lippmann, and Emil Krapelin in Germany, Jean Marie Ley in France, Edward Webster in Canada, and Cyril Burt, Charles Myers, and Sir Frederick Bartlett in Great Britain. Let us proceed with the discussion of Hawthorne studies. In the 1930s, IO psychology greatly expanded its scope. Until then, it had been involved primarily in personnel issues such as the selection and placement of employees. However, in the 1930s, 
When the findings from the famous Hawthorne studies were published, psychologists became more involved in the quality of the work environment, as well as the attitudes of employees. The Hawthorne studies, conducted at the Hawthorne plant of the Western Electric Company in the Chicago area, demonstrated that employee behavior was complex and that the interpersonal interactions between managers and employees played a tremendous role in employee behavior. The Hawthorne studies were initially designed to investigate such issues as the effects of lighting levels, work schedules, wages, temperature, and rest breaks on employee performance. Much to the surprise of the researchers, the actual work conditions did not affect productivity in the predicted manner. That is, there were times when productivity improved after work conditions were made worse, and times when productivity decreased after work conditions were made better. After interviewing employees and studying the matter further, the researchers realized that employees changed their behavior and became more productive because they were being studied and received attention from their managers, a condition that is now commonly referred to as the Hawthorne effect. Perhaps the major contribution of the Hawthorne studies was that it inspired psychologists to increase their focus on human relations in the workplace and to explore the effects of employee attitudes. The 1960s were characterized by the passage of several major pieces of civil rights legislation, which are discussed in the next lectures. These laws focused the attention of HR professionals on developing fair selection techniques. As a result, the need for IO psychologists greatly increased. The 1960s were also characterized by the use of sensitivity training and T groups, or what we call the laboratory training groups, for managers. The 1970s brought great strides in the understanding of many organizational psychology issues that involved employee satisfaction and motivation. The decade also saw the development of many theories about employee behavior in organizations. B. F. Skinner's work such as Beyond Freedom and Dignity resulted in the increased use of behavior modification techniques in organizations. The 1980s and 1990s brought four major changes to IO psychology. The first involved an increased use of fairly sophisticated statistical techniques and methods of analysis. This change is evident if one compares journal articles written in the 1960s with those written since 1980. More recent articles use such complex statistical techniques as path analysis, structural equation modeling, meta-analysis, multivariate analysis of variance, MANOVA, and causal modeling. Prior to the 1970s, simpler statistical techniques such as t-tests and analysis of variance, ANOVA, were used, unless you are wearing a pocket, protector or have taken a statistics course, these methods probably are not familiar to you. This reliance on statistics explains why students enrolled in an IO psychology doctoral program take at least five statistics courses as part of their education. A second change concerned a new interest in the application of cognitive psychology to industry. For example, articles written about performance appraisal in the 1970s primarily described and tested new methods for evaluating employee performance. In the 1980s and early 1990s, however, many articles approached the performance appraisal issue by examining the thought process used by managers when they conduct such appraisals. The third change was the increased interest in the effects of work on family life and leisure activities. Though stress had long been of interest to psychologists, it was during the last two decades of the 20th century that employee stress, especially stress resulting in workplace violence, received attention. The final major change in the 1980s and 1990s came about when IO psychologists took a renewed interest in developing methods to select employees. In the 1960s and 1970s, there, courts were still interpreting the major civil rights acts of the early 1960s, with the result that IO psychologists took a cautious approach in selecting employees. By the mid-1980s, however, the courts became less strict, and a wider variety of selection instruments was developed and used. Examples of these instruments include cognitive ability tests, 
personality tests, bio data, and structured interviews. Other changes during the 1980s and 1990s that had significant effects on I.O. psychology included massive organizational downsizing, greater concern for diversity and gender issues, an aging workforce, increased concern about the effects of stress, and the increased emphasis on such organizational development interventions as total quality management, or TQM, re-engineering, and employee empowerment. In the 2000s, perhaps the greatest influence on I.O. psychology was the rapid advances in technology. Many tests and surveys are now administered on the Internet, employers recruit and screen applicants online, job seekers use such social media outlets as Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook to find jobs, employees are being trained using e-learning and distance education, and managers are holding meetings in cyberspace rather than in person. Another important factor impacting I.O. psychology is the changing demographic makeup of the workforce. Women are increasingly entering the workforce and taking on managerial roles. Hispanics and Latinos are now the largest minority group in the United States. Asian Americans are the fastest growing segment of the U.S. population. And an increasing number of workers, vendors, and customers have English as their second language. Thus, Diversity issues will continue to be an important factor in the workplace. The global economy is also affecting the role of IO psychology. As many manufacturing jobs are shifted to developing countries with lower wages, there will be an increased emphasis on service jobs requiring human relations skills. As an increasing number of employees work in other countries, as expatriates, and as rates of immigration, both legal and illegal, increase, efforts must keep pace to understand various cultures, and training must be conducted so that employees and managers can successfully work not only in other countries, but at home with expatriates from other countries. Other factors that are currently impacting I.O. psychology include high unemployment rates, movements, toward flexible work schedules, family-friendly work policies, accommodation of an increasing number of employees with child care and elder care responsibilities, flatter organizational structures with fewer management levels, population shifts from urban to suburban locations, and increasing costs of health care benefits. In addition, potential changes in the retirement age for Social Security may result in employees working into their late 60s. In this lecture we will discuss the brief history of